Okay, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're going to introduce a new data type. We're going to talk about strings. Strings and strings can be built using characters. A character is being a primitive data type and strings being a non-primitive data type, also referred to as composite or aggregate data types because we can build strings using different data types, hence an array of characters. All right, imagine we're trying to store the word Julia here, Julia here. Well, what is Julia? Julia is a string because it's a text information, right? It could be a name, it could be alphanumeric, it can contain a sentence with punctuation, spaces, and so forth. Um, and each, that text effectively, it's a whole bunch of characters strung together, right? Hence the name string. All right, so we have a whole bunch of characters strung together to build a string, and hence a string really is an array of characters, an array of characters. And that's why we, you know, after we introduce arrays, it, it makes sense to go right into strings and look at those as well, right? Because a lot of similarities. Um, so if, let's take a look at how we can declare, initialize, and print a string. These two lines um, summarize some of the basics. Uh, we're gonna declare a string by just what I said, it's an array of characters, right? So we're gonna use it similar to an array, right? We see character array, um, this specifying eight being the max size, okay? And then a key thing about strings is that we are going to use uh, double quotes, double quotes here to refer to a string. Okay, so strings effectively use double quotes. And we've actually already seen this before because we've been doing things like printing strings inside of print Fs and everything where we say like the value of blank is such and such. And we've been using these double quotes a lot to indicate text. And I kind of alluded to it a little bit earlier on in a, in a uh, earlier video. Um, so this that first line declares and initializes the string. Okay, this here, that size is bounding the maximum size of the array saying, hey, we've... Uh, our, the, the longest string we're going to be storing here is of size eight, okay? Because we're, we're, we're leaving space for eight characters. We're reserving and we're holding on to memory space for eight characters. Um, and then to print it out, we need to introduce a new format specifier here. It's a nice, easy one to remember where when we're printing out a string, we're going to use percent %s for string. Um, so in this case, this, this little block of code here would print the word hello to the screen effectively. We're showing taking the string, initializing it, storing it in a location in memory, and then, and then displaying it back out. Okay, so I want to point out a, a couple things. There are a few nuances related to strings that we want to be very well aware of. For one, um, in this case, I said that we're going to have a string that's of size 8. Okay, so if I make space here for eight um, characters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? So if we have space here for um, eight characters, for eight characters, when we write the word hello here, okay? Okay, I'm using five of those characters, okay? And there's one other thing I'm gonna introduce is that um, we need to know when a string ends, right? We need to know when a string ends. Oftentimes, we have a lot more space to store string um, than we actually are using. And we're going to use something here, which is referred to as the null terminator, okay? Designated with a back, uh, backslash zero that indicates it's the uh, end of the string. Okay, so effectively what that does is you think about from the computer standpoint, we know that the string starts here. We know where it starts. And when we're printing it, when the computer's printing it out, it's really printing effectively letter by letter. And then when it hits this, this null terminator says, hey, stop. Okay, stop printing uh, because we've hit the null terminator. Okay, so... Um, one of the things that how that has to do with um, keeping in mind that when we use this this eight here, saying the string of size eight, we need to hold one character for that null terminator. Okay, so effectively we can store really seven letters, or seven characters in there. With that, we need at least one. We need one spot left over for the null terminator. Okay, we'll see some of the implications if you mess that up and momentarily. 
right? So one of the ways I'd recommend, this is kind of remember it is, you know, the null terminator, super important, you know, that I'll be at the back of the string, right? As a way of remembering that this is indeed, uh, you always need it. Okay, the null terminator here, I'll be at the back of a string, right? Don't forget it. If you forget the null terminator, you're making a mistake, right? If you overwrite it or it's not there, you're messing something up. And those can be really nasty, weird errors to see. You know, what's kind of helpful to learn these things is to break stuff on purpose and see what happens. And we'll, we'll kind of do a little bit of that uh, momentarily, okay? So, but before we get into that, let's take a look at um, one other thing that we have we should really be mindful of related to strings. And that's how to read them in from the user, right? How to read them in from the user. So looking at scan F here, and um, we're going to use the, as you would probably guess, right? We're going to use um, percent S as the format specifier, okay? But there's a couple weird things, and these are kind of, these are somewhat nasty ones to remember and to fully explain, especially when we haven't hit some other concepts yet of why they work the way they do, all right? So this is, this is a hard one to kind of uh, articulate and we have some concepts that kind of mutually depend on each other. They're very hard to teach, in my opinion. But we'll, uh, we're, we're going to kind of build it up in some stages here. So for one, right, the scan app looks very similar to what we've seen before. However, there's a couple things, right? Notice there is no ampersand here. There's no ampersand here. That is not a mistake, okay? That is the correct way to do it. Right. I'm going to give you the very short answer here, and then later on, when we get to another topic, we're going to give you the much more thorough explanation. Okay. Um, the very short answer is that strings, since they're arrays, the string actually effectively, can, uh, when you use the term like str, right, the name of the string, it's keeping track of where in memory the string is stored. Okay, And other variables like x... Um, you know, the name of the variable is like, if you use the name of the variable, it's giving you the value that's contained here, like if the value is five, okay? But effectively, what's actually being stored in your computer's memory when you use something like just the name of the string is your, you keep, it's keeping track of where in memory the string is being stored. So for other variables like integers and everything, I need to use the ampersand X to say, hey, that's the location in memory where that's stored where this is already storing it. Um, now, that is not a really good explanation because it takes a lot of time to go into it and I don't want to go into that now, right? I just want to give you a rough idea. W to do it right, it's going to take a lot of time, right? And we'll do multiple videos on it. But just I don't want to just tell you something and then not at least provide a little bit of an explanation for why, okay? The other thing that's a weird thing to see here is the fact that I left a space here on purpose between the uh, before this percent s and that's because strings do weird things with white space especially scan uh, the scan f in white space um, this prevents a lot of issues related to reading in white space especially if there's white space before the string that, that happens to be before the, sh the string that you're actually trying to capture the short answer right now to describe that is you tend to have less problems and weird things that happen and kind of like things that drive you a little nuts if you put a space between that and the percent S, okay? So I, I don't wanna to get too bogged down into that. Um, and it will actually work without it, but you tend to have less problems if you put it in there. And it, it has to do with trailing with white space before the, the thing that you actually wanna read, okay? All right, so let's look a little bit about what happens if we mess something up Right, let's we'll hit a couple. Let's do a little bit of practice on the concepts that we just looked at. Okay, so for one, let's take a look at an example here relating to um, using using um, strings and how they're stored in memory. Okay, so imagine we've got this string Amy um, being stored the value Amy, and the name of the string is name. And keeping in mind that we need right, we need to have this here uh, to be one greater than the number of characters in the string, right? So the size here, this is, we need, we've got three characters, but we need this extra character here, okay? It's for the null terminator, null terminator, okay? So the size, the size of the string, right? Or the length of the string is actually three, right? 
but the length of the array is actually needs this additional character, so it's four. All right, so we're going to use something a little bit later on. I won't go too deep in it now. That allows us to get the length of the string, and the length, right? The length of the string is three, right? But the size of the array is actually, um, you know, it can be bigger than that. It needs to be at least one bigger than that. Okay, where up on our previous example. Right, if we have unused space here, it's it's kind of irrelevant. It's whatever junk happens to be in there, right? We didn't need it, right? We have eight space for eight characters, right? We need five for the word hello plus one for the null terminator, and then these are ones that like kind of space that we're holding on to, but we're not really using at the moment. Okay. Um, now something some weird stuff can happen, right? Some weird things can happen, and let me kind of show you an example. All right. Um, let's say we've got um, a string, and we're going to call the string Amy. Oops, I got to give it a proper name. There, we'll call it just S1. Okay. And let's imagine then I've got another string. Okay, another string, and I'm going to call it um, S2. Okay, now in memory, right, my computer's memory, I'm effectively have something like this. When I, when I initialize the string, when I initialize the string like that, it's going to dump the null ter terminator. is going to get added there automatically. Okay. So then the same thing when I add the other string. I'm going to have something like this in my computer's memory where I'm storing information. Okay. So when I, when I do this here, right, Adam's going to get written right as well as the with the um, with the null terminator so well what happens right what happens if I do this right if I overwrite s1 right and I, I'm gonna use something um, that we haven't fully talked about yet but I'll, I'll explain what it's doing I want to do I don't want to write something um, incorrect so I'm gonna do it the proper way but I'll tell you what this this effectively means and we'll follow up on it um, Let's imagine I do this. Now, this is STRCPY stands for string copy. And effectively what that means conceptually is S1 equals bill. Okay. Now, I'm actually not allowed to write it this way. And we'll talk about why later on in another video. I can't write it that way. This is the proper way to write it where I just did in black there with the, using the string copy. Okay. Now, what does that do? Right, I've effectively right over this, okay, right over that, um, so that the null terminator is lost. Okay, so a question then is to say, well, what happens if I do this? Print f percent s s one, okay. The question to you is, what does that print? Okay, what does that print? And the answer is something sh quite strange. The answer to that is that's going to print this, Bill Adam. Okay, because what happens is S1 is here. We start printing the string, and the computer does not know to stop that you hit the end of the string until you hit the null, a null terminator, right? So it actually reads, it just continues on and reads the wrong variable or part of the wrong variable. It's the correct one and then continues on and reads the next string that's sitting there in memory. So a big clue of that you've written over the null terminator is if you see the correct thing that you're printing, want to print, followed by some things that are wrong, okay? That, that's a clue that you've ran, you've went past the end of the null terminator and you're, and you're displaying a whole bunch of junk. Okay. 
Um, so the weird things, right? I said weird things can happen if you're not mindful of it. Now we'll look at how to do it properly in, in, a, in a subsequent video. I won't, we won't get too bogged down into it now with some of the nuances. We need to learn a couple more things. Um, all right, let me show you some other things that can happen is that I want you to remember that um, strings, if you're using scanf with strings, they are designed to use the, um, to ignore everything after the first white space character, okay? So if I, if I use scanf, okay? If I use scanf and somebody types in, say, Frank Sinatra, where there's a space, right, between the first name and the second, uh, and the last name, right? We're not, we're actually gonna just print the, the name Frank. We're gonna lose everything to the right of that, that space. It only, it, um, it's gonna ignore everything after that first uh, white space. Okay, um, and we could we could run some code. We can prove that that actually happens. Uh, we come here. We look at this example here. Let me uh, compile and run it. Let's make sure that we have it. Okay. So I enter string, and if I said, in this case, if I entered a string and I said, um, hello, space, world, okay, notice what is printing here is just the word hello. I've lost everything, including the white space, right? And I put backslash, the double quotes here, remember, backslash is the escape character. It means don't treat these quotes as special and print them to the screen. That's how you can actually print double quotes to the screen. All right, so that one of the reasons I did that is to indicate that we're not actually including the space after the O, right? So that we can kind of see right where the word begins the and ends, okay? So we lose, if you um, scan F with strings, and it's a good idea to put, like it works fine in this case, it's a good idea to put a blank space before the percent S, it'll avoid problems if you have some blank space coming in before the character. Um, you know, I recommend doing that and it'll just kind of save yourself some headaches. Um, how, okay, so scanf, if you're reading a single word, if you're if you're not reading in white space, and um, that's, uh, it, it's good to use, okay? I won't go too deep into it now, but we can use um, something called fgets here. Um, and we'll follow up this later on um, when we learn some more fundamentals of what's going on, kind of like we'll describe in more detail uh, what this is doing and how it works and how to test if it fails. But right now I just want to show it to you and give you a sense of that there are ways to read things in if you want space, spaces. So I'm, I'm going to ask you to do this at some point in the class, but I would tend to remind you how the proper way to do it, at least initially, uh, because it's a little bit of a nuanced thing. But effectively here, if I have F gets, all right, let me um, comment out up here. The first example I showed you, right, we couldn't actually, get, when we had the user type in hello world, we only got hello, right? What we're gonna see down here is I can, uh, I can get with F gets, I can have somebody type in like a sentence or something with spaces uh, and it will in fact store that correctly, okay? So it's another way of getting string input from the user, okay? Uh, I didn't prompt the user to type anything, so I'm just gonna write something in. Uh, if I write hello world, right, and, in, and indeed it prints it out with the spaces, okay? So we can use fgets. Effectively, it takes in three pieces of information, the name of the string, the large, the amount of space, the maximum size of that string, um, that, that array of characters, that string, and then this stands for something called standard input. Effectively, we'll go deeper into that later on in the class. Effectively, what that means is input from your keyboard. You can actually get inputs from other places, including files. Uh, but this is saying, hey, get it from the person's keyboard, okay, that input. And we'll, we'll, like I said, we'll go deeper in it later on. But for now, I just want you to be able to see that there is indeed a way of getting strings entered uh, with spaces, okay? Now, with that being said, let's keep the video Let's make it not go too too long. Let's stop there. We can go deeper into strings in a subsequent uh, video lesson.